Look, I know by now some of you are wondering what happened to Gene Wright and who is this at the conference? Well, I looked around this morning. I didn't see the leftovers of any pods that might have replaced me. Uh, I don't think I've had any alien possessions or anything like that. But uh, after having potentially dissed the HP 41 yesterday, what better way to follow it up with than to put the original TI-30 up here? So I've done this kind of thing before. You really can't hear me without this. What? What? Yes. No. Uh, I did this before. Remember when I did in praise of the SR-56, which I thought was praiseworthy. Well, here, I know I've gone even further off the reservation in praise of the original TI-30, not the ones you can still buy today. The TI-30 will never die. But in praise of the original TI-30, I want to show you why I think it's praiseworthy and why it's significant. So let's take off. It was introduced on June the 13th, 1976. I remember seeing it in an ad and my jaw dropping open for the reasons that we'll go through. Features, trig functions and inverses in degrees, radians, and grads. Not that I've ever used grads, not being a surveyor, but uh, it's, they were on there. Logs and anti-logs, both natural and common, using the inverse key. Powers and roots. The inverse key, of course, is how you changed y to the x to do a root, log to 10 to the x, and stuff like that. As well as reciprocal square root and square. So you can see them all up there, very easily, easily read. It had degrees, radians, and grads mode indicated by double quote marks in the display for grads, single quote for radians, and it was blank for degrees. You push that DRG key and cycle through the different modes. Had one memory, one data memory with store recall, sum, and exchange. Constant, oh, you can't live without the constant mode. Percentage, pi, and parentheses. By the way, it'll probably say four pending operations and how many sets of parentheses could you have? But we didn't even know about that then. <laughs> Fifteen. Oh, so in other words, if you don't know how to work this thing, put a couple of extra parentheses in there. Uh, exponents, strangely, could be shifted uh, where you could take 1.23 times 10 to the second and turn it into 12.3 times 10 to the first using that EE with the down arrow key, pressing that over and over if you wanted to ex uh, show it in some other way. That's, that's useful for, for essentially manually getting the equivalent of an engineering display. It's a manual engineering mode, absolutely. When you do something wrong on this thing, it does display error, reminiscent of the 25 and others. So as I say, four pending operations, 15 sets of parentheses. I have no idea why that would be the case. It had an eight-digit LED display, five plus two, which was fairly standard for a lot of eight-digit displays. Nine total display locations, including the sign of the number, the mantissa sign, and the sign for the exponent. It displayed eight digits, but Joe did calculations sometimes to 10 and 11 places, which I was very surprised to find. For example, one inverse LNX, e to the x, generates that number compared to the actual number, so it's accurate beyond the digit shown in the display. The next digit is rounded accurately, which I was very, very surprised at. Pi is entered as 3.14159265536, so pi is entered more than that, rounded correctly at 11 places. Uh, my favorite, always, you know, we always pick up a machine and key something in to see if it's working. I do the sign of 25 degrees. I have no idea why. But it came out to be uh, fairly close. Two square root generated spot on to 10 places. And this was really strange to me. Three reciprocal reciprocal didn't lose anything. It generated three back where you subtract three from it, then there's nothing remaining. So maybe some hocus pocus going on behind the scenes, right? Uh, it came with a 224-page owner's manual, the great Math on Keys book, with uh, some older guy on there. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, the University of Denver developed two secondary school programs for use with this model. Calculator math was one of them, and introductory algebra was another. TI's probably first real attack into the school system, which, think about how things might have been different had some other competitor have gone after the lower end schools the way uh, TI did. It weighed 114 grams, four ounces, very, very light for its time, originally powered by a nine volt battery. It was so power hungry, they offered a rechargeable battery pack that changed two AA NICADs into a nine volt source. 
you would probably know if the intro date was the same, but before they introduced that battery, the rechargeable pack, they sold an SR40, which despite the total difference in nomenclature, was exactly the same internally as the TI-30, except it came with the rechargeable battery. And you're going to see a picture of the SR-40 coming up shortly. Okay. I, don't, I don't know, since I'm not talking about it, I don't know the introduction date, but we could find it on data math. That's where you go for everything, uh, the datamath.org. Uh, power consumption on this thing was incredible. It was incredible. The screen blanked after several seconds displaying a floating decimal point. Uh, the calculator retained all state information in that low power mode, if you woke the machine, however, by pressing on clear, it cleared it. So there's no telling how many students were in the middle of a calculation and are like, rats. Uh, so I always got in the habit of just pressing exchange twice, the EXE key. So if it took whatever's in display in and out of memory, and I was back where I was. So I think this is a video. Um, it, it turns out it's actually a souped up TI-1250, uh, the original four banger that had a memory, four keys on the top. All the internals were essentially the same, just with more functions added. Uh, there's the 1250, so uh, I remember a friend of mine got that for Christmas somewhere in the uh, seventh grade. He had been very bad that year. Uh, here's the video. That's what it did, right? The little decimals would float across the screen, and it would just do that. I timed it. It took about 90 seconds before it would completely get to this point, uh, so it was still burning a lot of power. Same frame was used, to Eric's point, for other models. This is the SR40. The keys are identical other than those are actually molded onto the keys as opposed to written above it on a faceplate. Uh, the TI-30 is 100%, 100 percent functionally equivalent to the SR40, which cost $20 more, maybe because it looked more professional, so they um, pulled in some, some confused people. For the $20, you got the rechargeable pack. You got the rechargeable battery pack for that $20 more. I think maybe it looked more professional. It does look a little nicer to me, but uh, funny that it was advertised as a replacement for the SR50. If you look at the old ads, that 40 is advertised as a replacement for the SR50, and they're nowhere close from a functional perspective. That SR50 has a lot more functions on it, but caveat emptor, right? The same frame was used for a lot of other models, the TI Money Manager, the cheaper uh, financial machine, and the TI programmer, and by the way, on the prize table combo here, if you have to choose this one, you got to take them both, is a TI-30 that's in the box and a TI programmer with the manual. So uh, those are back there courtesy of uh, Scott Reynolds. Here's a picture of the box, several boxes over time. It had this unique curved uh, angle uh, rather on the, the top part of the box and all the features and specifications there on the back. That's the box that's back there. I don't want to even charge you $12.99 and $19.82 for it. Sold in three different boxes with optional stylish cases. And okay, I want to see who had this one. Come on, somebody back here had this one, I know. Boy, and you ditched it in order to make girls notice you were alive, I bet. Uh, the, the tough one was this. Uh, I had never see, I'd seen pictures of that one before, but uh, Scott found one and sent that to me the uh, kind of corduroy case. Boy, you would have been flying high with that one. It had quite the supply chain. The LED chips were furnished by the uh, uh, SC group in Dallas. We talked about them last year with the 88. The lens covering the LED display was furnished by an Ohio supplier. The circuit board and the IC were from TI in Singapore. The board assembly was done by TI Taiwan. The keyboard was made down in Lubbock, one of the main TI plants. And it was assembled to the board in the Lubbock or Abilene plant, changed over time. The internal ROM had 18,000 plus bits in size. It was 2K by 9 bits. RAM was 576 bits. Nine registers with 16 digits per register at 4 bits per digit. Cheap. This was the key point. <coughs> Cheap. $24.95 was the MSRP when it was introduced in 1976. How did TI make that so cheap? Well, this is a picture of the PCB board, the circuit board, from the SR50 in 1974. I mean, look at that. Capacitors, resistors all over the place, a couple of chips. 1974, two years later, this is the TI-30. One chip, not a single other item on that. It's incredible. That's what technology did in two years. This introduced up around $200. This was $24 two years later. Sorry? 150-ish, right? 
Uh, and they varied, uh, I know it, it went down over time and stuff like that, but TI learning curve. Richard used to write about the learning curve. They applied it ruthlessly, but that's a great thing. So why is it such a big deal? Well, sometimes it can go bad. You need to replace it. That looks kind of ugly. Um, that may have been that rechargeable battery pack instead of the 9 volt. I don't know. Um, and production from 1976 to 1983, the production method used zero screws. Not a single screw in the manufacture of this item. There were six interconnecting plastic clips that held the top and the bottom together. There's actually a video of common repairs for the TI-30 and others from uh, C. David Graves. I've got the link in here. I would like to point you to go to his site. We need to let him know about HHC because he has a lot of uh, know-how with this stuff and it'd be nice to bring him in. So original cost was $24.99 or $24.95. That was $133 in 2023 dollars. Wow. It was still expensive, but still, I remember using these as footballs during breaks in between class. Compare that to the $395 HP 35 and 72, which is $2,800. So it's still, you know, quite a lot cheaper. The market price had dropped to $15. You can find advertisements buying the TI-30 for $15 in mid-1977. It dropped to $9 in 1982. Over 15 million units were made of that original TI-30 model over those seven years. So I want to praise this great tool that helps so many kids um, learn math. Without this, it would have been potentially a whole generation that might not have been able to afford a better calculating tool. Any questions on the original TI-30? I do want to remind you, Richard, you can take one home today. He's like, okay. Now, uh, you said the original. Do you know how many other TI-30s, the X and the... Uh, How many different TI-30 variations and models there have been? Uh, it exceeds the capacity of the TI-30 to calculate it. Yeah. Uh, about all of them all or maybe even all of them on. You could, I'm sure I could count them up on data math. I mean, they, they do a lime color and they call it a TI-30 XB24. Who knows? Yeah, yeah right. And it's, it's also it's, a uh, solar version. And those don't necessarily have that same rather minimal but still powerful function feature set over there. I mean, I'd been staring at prices and all this kind of stuff, and I just couldn't believe that kind of math power at $24 seemed outrageous in 1976. David. Um, really just a comment, but I remember I was in eighth grade in 1976, and either eighth grade or ninth grade, everybody had one. Everybody had one of these in, back there. Yeah, yep. The teachers were all still like working slide rules, and all of a sudden all the students had this kind of And see, he as well left the dark side. So it is possible to do that. Again, we, we skip over that because, I mean, again, we use these as footballs, throwing them back and forth in between class because they were so relatively cheap. Still $133, maybe I wouldn't have done that. But so many people had exposure to higher level math made easy by that machine. And so to me, that's worthy of praise, which is why I wanted to show it to you here this morning, this afternoon. So now we go back to our regularly scheduled RPN programming. Thank you.